Hey guys, on the last video we went over, we was going to use uh, three different deer hairs, and we used bucktail in the last jig. This this one I'm going to introduce you to deer body hair and uh, belly hair. Now the belly hair and the body hair looks similar, but it does not act similar. And I'm going to show you when we start tying. The body hair, I mean the belly hair, will flare out more on you. So it's going to make a, a fuller looking tail so you don't need to use as much of this material when you're tying your jigs because you still want that air bubbles to, to come off there as it's coming through the water and you, you ain't going to need it thick. And the reason I say that, this is the jig we're going to tie using the body hair. And that um, it has a uh, size 8 chenille in it. And this was just some stuff I had laying around. I already had the heads painted. So, and that this is basically on your thoughts of coming up with new colors to try. Uh, I guarantee the species has never seen this jig before. And it's going to work. I just have, you know, have faith that that's going to work with them colors. But on your body hair, we're going we're gonna to use this, and, and this one is used a lot like tying squirrel, um, a lot of the other hairs. But for the body, I'm going to show you how to do a, a dubbing loop. And we're going to use dubbing for the body on this one. And it's going to be, uh, I think I'm using rabbit dubbing. We're going to use, I think I'm going to go with um, an olive, a dark olive. So, we're going to try that one. Uh, let's see what that says it is. It calls it an olive brown, but it's a, it's a dark, dark olive. So, I'm going to flip the camera around and get set up on the vise. And this one, I'm going to kind of flare out some, and then I'm going to kind of pull it back in so y'all can see some of the, some of the work that's going to, it's going to take and on the body hair I mean the belly hair excuse me all these different deer hairs this is one sixteenth and that's um, powder painted and hand painted I I hadn't put the black dot in these yet but that was the same ones we, we used uh, previously and we're going to be using 40 diameter thread I'm going to use black and we're going to start this like always right behind the head run to your hook point and then back up about halfway put a counterclockwise spin on that and that's going to be make it easier to catch your hair the loop's going to flip back around all right as far as your material we're not using much and we will use a deer hair stocker in this when tying these so what I'm wanting to do is I'm going to insert all that hair in the deer stacker. Then just tap it about five times. Pull it back apart. Then all that hair's lined up for us. I want it the tail, the length of the, the whole jig from the head so then I'm going to transfer it into this, and that'll go to your hook point. So all this needs to be cut off. Now the way this hair flares out, you want to go ahead and cut that before you get it start cinching down. So what I'm going to do is make a couple of loose loops right there on the, right behind the head just to catch that hair. Because if you don't, it is really going to flare out. All right, then we're going to run it on back to the hook point where we always do. All right. That, that ain't a hard cinch, but you already see how that deer hair is flaring out. Now, you can put a, a tighter, and it's going to flare out even, even worse. So what I normally do is put just a light loop or two right back here. And then as I'm working back up toward the head, I'm going to tie it all down, tight to the hook. Get all that material tied down. 
All right, we're going to use a green flash. This is like about probably a one sixteenth or less wide. I'm going to tie one piece of it in on each side. Then we're going to tie in our chenille. Like I said, this is a size 8. Um, this is a one-off package that I got through some trades or something. Because I don't remember purchasing this color. So I'm sure it was through some trading or buying somebody's material out. Alright, then we're going to put some head cement on the thread couple of wraps and then we're going to whip finish it. And there's your jig using um, your body hair. One second, I got to hook my phone up. I didn't realize my, my battery was slow. Got to hook it to a lifeline here. Okay. So there's your jig using the body hair. Now I'm going to show y'all, just for the sake of showing you, what that hair will do if you cinch it down real tight. I'm just going to pick up a head. I wasn't planning on doing this. But it's information that you is going to be very useful for you this time. Okay, I'm just going to just do this quick. I'm going to get me another clump of the hair. And I'm going to stack it again. If you don't, there's some guard hairs and stuff in there that sticks out. It just makes the jig look bad on these. the same way I'm gonna cut it where it needs to be cut for length so that's where it's gonna tie in okay what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go back down here at the hook point and I'm gonna tie out tie this hair in and see what just happened that hair fly flares out and you can't hardly do nothing with it now there's certain flies that I use this hair on and I actually do this on purpose to make the thorax, thorax section in here, or the body. Because it, it flares out and it makes a full body. But if you cinch that down without putting a few wraps up here on the top to control it, this is the mess you've got to deal with. And you've got to somehow pull that hair back down and try to get it all trapped. But as you see, it ain't much help for it. It takes a while to do it. So, don't make that mistake. Um, that, that's after years of using this stuff and trying to figure out how to, how to deal with the, the belly hair. I don't use it a whole lot. Um, <laughs> and reason of that, um, now as far as the, the regular body hair, I really like body hair. Now this... This is from a, a southern buck, or a southern deer. And you see that hair is probably about an inch long. Now, this over here is formed from a uh, Midwest deer, or a northern deer. And you see how long that belly, I mean that deer hair is, compared to the southern. So it's probably twice as long as what our winter bucks get so it's just cording what you're wanting to tie or what you're using and uh if you notice this particular one that i bought is it's got a darker tint than what this one does and i like that i like that black that's that's really showing up in there and every every piece is going to be a little bit different so if you if you got a chance to 
buy this in, you know, on hand, in person. Really look at it and make sure you get what you what you really like. So we're gonna take us a we'll clump of that hair and we're gonna make it. I'm probably using uh, about the size of a lead and a pencil. We're gonna stack it. Tap it about four or five times. Let me let me back up on this just a little bit so I can show y'all something. When you're stacking your hair, if you'll put your finger right on top of this piece and just kind of keep it from coming apart and just kind of tap it like that, this piece will, will, will be able to move a little bit and it'll work that hair down. So when you get it stacked, all you have to do is just come in there and grab that and then pull all that old waste out of there. A lot of that's under hair and guard hairs but then you got a, a, a clump that's usable all right let's get back up to the hook all right messed up and didn't get the thread on there first Okay, we're going to tie that right in just like you would any other material. My threads. Mess with me, didn't get it cut all the way. Now, you see, this hair does about the same thing, but not quite as bad on this end of it. It's going to flare the more you cinch it down, too. So, what I like to do is cinch it down about halfway and then start working a little bit looser and looser as you get back to that point. And there you got your hair laying down. It don't flare anymore. Now when you start working back up, then you can dress up the rest of that hair going up behind the head. It ain't near as bad as the body hair, but it will. It will definitely flare. And, and this is used a lot in fly tying because you want this. It's all you use it in spinning. You can spin that hair around and it will completely go around the hook. It'd be just like most like making a dubbing knot. Okay. Or a dubbing loop, I mean. I'm gonna back you off to where y'all can see what I'm doing here. I'm running this thread back to where the hair stopped. Then I'm running out a piece about probably six inches. And then I'm gonna come back up top. I doubled it. Come back up here where it started and wrap it. Then run this thread back up to the head and pull that thread out of your way. And this is a, a dubbing toe. So it, it drops in like that and it holds, them, holds that thread apart. It's used to spin this together when we, when we get our dubbing in. Right, I'm gonna get some of this dubbing and what we're going to do, we're going to start pulling that out. And we're going to start putting it between your three. So what I want to do is make enough of a dubbing rope to go from that, that tail up to behind the head. And as, you, as you're putting it in here, you can kind of spin it a little bit to let it trap itself. Now that's probably enough. Move some of it down here. Okay. So then you take this spinner and just spin it. I always spin mine counterclockwise. Everything I spin, I always spin counterclockwise. But as you see now, you got a dubbing rope that you can work with for that body. All right. So now what we're going to do. We're gonna start working that. I, I don't take the two off. I leave it on there so so I can have more control of it. And you're gonna start wrapping that dubbing just as it was a chenille body or a material. And we'll pull 
pull it. And if you got a little bit extra, you can always pull that off. All right, now you just let your thread hang there, and then you get your bobbin back. Now you can buy a bobbin holder that is on an arm that will come out across here, and you can put your bobbin right on top of it. All right, now what we're going to do now is take our thread, and we're going to tie that off just like we would if we was using chenille. Then we can clip that thread, and you're done with that piece. I'm going to pull you back in. All right. Then we're going to take and tie that off. Get your cement. And we're going to whip finish it. Tie that jig off. All right. Now, we're going to use a homemade dubbing brush. Anybody that's been tying any length of time, especially flies, have seen this. And it's a cheap trick. Because all this is, is Velcro. This is just a little short piece of Velcro glued on to a popsicle stick. I put that there so I can hang it like it. But if you notice it, I don't want this real wide, I want it kind of thin, and then put that on. But what we're going to do, you can take that brush and just hit that dubbing. And what you're doing, you're pulling them fibers back out to separate it, to give it that full body. And there you go. Let's see if we can get some on the bottom. There you go. And that's a dubbing loop. So that's a new one for you, and it's going to take you a little practice. But uh, that's going to be a good one for you to practice. Because you can use that a lot of times. I use it constantly in my fly tying. And I do a lot of jigs, especially my smaller jigs, like 132nd, 164th. Um, tie a lot of them using that. So... That's two materials that you really need to practice with. Like I say, that's deer body hair. And this one is deer belly hair. It's going to flare. So practice with that. And practice, you have to practice on where you start your thread and how to cinch it down. Because it is going to flare on you. Ain't no doubt about it. And you'll have to learn to deal with that. But then, this is the body hair. I really love working with deer body hair because you can really control it, you can spin it, you can do so many different things with it. But that's the jigs, um, and that kind of covers deer hair. The next video, we'll get into elk hair, and, and it's going to be kind of the same. You got some short, some long, but we'll go over that, and it's going to work a lot like deer hair does but a lot of a lot of the flies will call for the the elk hair and um you re you really like that material too so until the next time that's the lesson for this week guys i hope you enjoy it and i hope you're learning something so get out and fish when you can see you later